Welcome to OMG, our meditation generation. I'm Melissa. I'm Joseph. I'm Yalesa. And today we're going to talk about why we're having this show and how we all got started meditating. Uh, in, in general, meditation, there's lots of different practices. There's lots of different ways to get there. But we want to give our audience a way to access meditation a little bit spicier way, have a little more fun with it, and kind of get off the mat and bring it out into our regular, everyday life. So kind of to get started, how did you start meditating? All of us have been meditating for a while, so can you share? Who wants to start? Okay, I'll start. <laughs> All right, Joseph. I'm on the end here. I uh, started meditating, uh, let's see, I'm going to age myself. I started, <laughs> I, yeah, I started meditating about 20 years ago. I was, 20 years ago? I did. No, really, I was a student, yeah. Actually, I started, first learned about meditation, like reading a book, and then a friend of mine said I was, it was a finals week in law school, and she law was like, Law school? Yeah, years. and she was like, oh, you should, you should really meditate. I'm like, really? How do I do that? And so she showed me just how to sit down and breathe, and she said, if you do this 20 minutes a day, it'll make a huge difference. And, um, you know, I thought, what do I have to lose? So I tried it, and, you know, little by little, I started learning more and more about meditation. But uh, fast forward to um, uh, now. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. So when you first did that, like you read the book, what did it tell you to do? Well, when I first read the book, I read the book uh, just about, you know, the Buddha's life and about the Buddha meditating. Right. But it was, really wasn't a part of my experience, so it didn't make sense to me. You know, <laughs> but I, did you try it? You tried it. No. When I read the book, I thought it was interesting, <laughs> um, but I didn't, I didn't try it. I mean, honestly, I was pretty Christian at the time, you know. <laughs> so I read the book, but I thought, you know, it didn't, it didn't fit my life. So mm -hmm. later on when I was in school and I was a student... Um, I had had a lot more different exposure to other cultures, other forms of spirituality. That's kind of an interesting thing because most people think that meditation is a form of religious practice. Right, right. Right, yeah. Right. 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 Then you have really to be changing, a particular religion. Right, right. right. Yeah. And a lot of people ask me, like, okay, so you meditate, does that mean you're Buddhist? Right. D definitely. Yeah. I, I get that Buddhism all the time. Has definitely I get that yeah. all the time. Meditation yeah. best of all the, yeah. Even though it's something that anybody can do, it's, it's, it's definitely seen as kind of an Eastern practice, isn't it? Right, right. right. And, and actually, it was a book about, on Buddhism, as I said, that introduced me to meditation. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Buddhists don't actually have a monopoly on meditation. <laughs> meditation actually exists in every culture. You know, every tradition actually has some form right. uh, where people learn how to calm themselves, word. use their breathing, uh -huh. either as a word or a sound. Right. Uh, but generally, it's about quieting the mind. So... You know, for me, it was a practical thing. I did it to calm during study. Just kidding. But, right, so I was going to ask you, that was my other question. Like, that's a good so one. So what did it do for you? What did it do for me? Um, it actually did. It did have that effect that um, it helped me prepare for my finals. You know, I was, it was actually the my, end of my first year, which is a huge thing. And um, I, I was, I was, kind of scared, kind of freaked out, and meditation, meditation, you know, really helped me shift my attitude, so when I went into the finals, it was just another day, you know, but, and, it, and that's the reason why you did it, or? Well, I, I started it because, you know, this friend introduced it to me at that the time when I really needed it, and that's oh, why I started okay. it, it because it, I had a practical need. Right. And I think that, you know, a lot of people don't start meditation either until right. they have some practical need. I know some people may yeah, actually, hear about it. My first experience with meditation, I used to do martial arts, and mm -hmm. although it was mostly for like a physical benefit, and I was, I don't know, maybe in like seventh or eighth grade, but they, they had this special session that was like kind of um, Japanese style Zen meditation. I hated it. <laughs> it was like the worst experience ever. They, you know, they put you in the, they call it seiza, where you're like on your knees, and like you're supposed to sit there all like straight and proper, mm. and I'm like 12 or 13 years right. old, and I'm like, okay, I can do this, and they're like, count to 10. All you had to do is count to 10, but if you have a single errant thought while you're like going, one, one, and then if you think another thought, you have to go back to one. Start all over like, again. One, this is stupid. Oh, 
<laughs> like, How long did he stay even, at one? It was like 45 minutes for 45 a minutes at one? Of, of blood. And I was just like, this is the worst experience ever. All I felt was pain. And like everyone was like, oh, I feel so much more peaceful. And I was like, I was all like red faced and angry. And I was like, I'm never meditating again. I'm never doing this ever again. Yeah. And no, like, I want to punch something. Yeah, actually, I had a similar experience. I didn't think of it as meditation at the time, but when I was about. I think 10 years old, I, I went to sleepover camp. I used to go to sleepover camp, you know, the whole month of August. I'm a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Canadian. Okay. 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 Overnight camp. I'm black and I'm over, Canadian. I go over, to sleepover camp. camp. Overnight camp. Oh, you don't say sleepover? No, sleepover is when, <laughs> when you go to hang out with your, your friends, your girlfriends, whatever. You, oh, that's you a sleepover. Oh, are you talking about a slumber party? No, no, no she's talking about an overnight, overnight camp, camp as opposed to day camp. Oh, As opposed sorry. to oh, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I went to sorry, cultural Canada. digression. Sorry, Canada. <laughs> Go ahead. I went to overnight camp, and on Sundays, on Saturdays and Sundays, they would have us all gather like at the rocks by the lake, and we'd sing like. Was songs. this through a church or something? No, oh, this was, no, like, no, no. It wasn't religious at all. We just sing songs like peacefully in nature. Um, I don't know. Hippies. This is got to be a Canadian thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Canadians are so nice. They go to sleep over camp. I don't know. But we would sing songs. And I remember I would sit there and every time I was like, this this is like so stupid. Like in my mind, I was thinking like, why are people singing songs and being peaceful? It was so irritatingly sucks. <laughs> uncomfortable for me. I really wanted yeah. to like break out and be like, and scream or run down, you know. That's really interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. most people think of meditation as being this just peaceful kind of blissed out state. But I think actually for most people when they start, right. Right. it's like that. <laughs> that is the way it starts. Right. And, like, and then it turns them off from it. Right. Right. That is the like, way it I'm, starts. I'm never going to get there to that like. Yes. I remember state. that. It mm -hmm. just feels like you're upset. I just felt upset. Yeah. Yeah. I was irritated. I was just like, I need to get out of here. <laughs> well, your mind is used to running around and all of a sudden yeah. you've trapped your mind in, in this one simple spot. And yeah. I think right. it's. I think yeah. this is really important for our, our viewers. I mean, whether they've meditated for a long time or not, everyone remembers that beginning point. And mm -hmm. also, beginners, when they're just trying to start, and they've heard of all these great benefits that meditation can bring them, but they try, and then it's just a disaster. Like, right. Like hard disaster. And then you kind of get discouraged. Joseph was more prepared for it. <laughs> well, well, you know, at that time it wasn't a disaster, but I had disasters later. So that's <laughs> yeah, <okay. no> later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I, I really hope that through this show we can kind of, show that meditation is a very dynamic thing. Right. It's right. something that's actually full of mm -hmm. energy circulation. It's a very emotional, like, very mm -hmm. engaging experience and activity, not just this Right, that you just sit activity. down. Yeah. Or, like, the concept of meditation is kind of like you sit down, you cross, cross your, your legs, legs in this mm -hmm. horribly painful <laughs> position for hours and hours, and you're just supposed to sit there. And that's just not true at all. Like, your whole life can be... A meditation. Right. Only Asian people can do meditation. Well, and that's the thing. I, I think because that's the real. Because they can sit on the floor. The floor but I think that's a, that's a really important <laughs> point to bring up is that meditation is as diverse as oh the humanity. Gosh, yeah. You know, so some people can meditate through painting. Uh -huh. Some people right. can meditate right. through running. You know, this is one of the reasons that people actually find so much relaxation yeah. in running because they actually right. focus, focus, focus. I really hope through this show we can explore lots of different techniques and, and lots of different stories and experiences. But also, what's the point of all this? Right, right. Like, so what? Okay, now you're meditating. What do you do from there? Okay, now right. you've gotten peaceful. And what do you do with that? Like, right. what, can, what can you actually do with meditation other than just in and of itself? Right. And I think that the greatest... Uh, tool that uh, meditation offers is the undiscovered tool inside of you because everybody finds out something about themselves. Right, yeah, it's true. You know, so uh, of course we can start out by telling you that there are all these benefits to meditation, right. but in reality, you're only going to know what it means to you when you try it yourself. It's something that you learn from your mm -hmm. own experience. It's right. like, I mean, I know it's been said lots of time knowing yourself or self exploration, but it really is fun. Like getting mm -hmm. to know what's going on inside of you is more exciting and dramatic than the best Hollywood blockbusters. Right. But I think you have to get past a certain point of just 
irritation and resistance. That's why it's mm-hmm. practice. Right. That's right. why, so why it's why it the, yeah. The, the, yeah, the consistency and resistance, right? right? Yeah. I mean, for me, like, when I really, so that was my childhood experience, but when I came <laughs> back and, like, walked into, a, yeah. you know, a place where people meditate, and mm-hmm. it was more, honestly, I was kind of superficial. You know, I was a professional dancer, and I just wanted to be more and more flexible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And actually, I realized, actually, it kind of was a blessing. As superficial as it was, it motivated me, you know, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. delve into and deal with different parts of myself just because I had this goal I wanted to accomplish, right, right. regardless of whether it was aesthetic or not. But I, I, <laughs> I wanted it, and it made me go through certain, there you, go. Yeah. you know, certain yeah. obstacles yeah. I had. And then through that, like, more got revealed to me. And then you change. Right. So it doesn't really matter what your motivation is for doing it. Exactly. Because what gets you through the door. Right. <laughs> right. Whatever gets you through the door. So Later on, have, that can um, change. Yeah. 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 Great. And, and in the chat room, we have uh, Mary Welton. She says, I'm really inspired by you guys, but what would you suggest for me? I'd like to meditate, but I don't know how if I'm always surrounded by noisy people. What should I do? This is oh. really important, right? Because people are like, think about like moms with like two or three kids running around right. or pets or full-time jobs or just there, it seems like there's no space or time for it. So this is a really good question. Right. What do you think? Well, you I will like take that. that. When, I, when I got older and tried meditation, one of the things that actually I did for myself, Mary, and I think this is a great, great question, I actually took myself to noisy places to try to meditate. Oh, to just really, for the challenge? Just, well, not only for the challenge, to recognize, really, like, if I can breathe and pay attention to my right. breathing, then I can see what noise is them and what noise is me. And, um, you know, I literally went to, um, I was living in Boston, and I literally went to, like, a, a you know, a main square. Mm-hmm. I sat on the banks of the river and traffic going by and people <laughs> walking by, and, and I tried to meditate. And, you know, I, I'm sure I look really foolish. <laughs> <laughs> or very but, envious. Or, but, yeah. Very, very envious. But, but, I, but I did, you know, I did realize, um, you know, if I walk down the street and people bother me, it's not them. It's me. You know, because they're yeah. doing what they're doing, and not, but not necessarily to me. I think so it really helped yeah. me figure out like that... Your reaction. Yeah. And like, yeah. Yeah. That's something about meditation, you know, when I was thinking about surrounded by noisy people, and, and always the lack of time, and the lack of mm-hmm. energy and space, but um, a lot of things that I've told people as I've tried to share meditation, as you start to meditate and practice more, it's actually like time seems to stretch more. You have mm-hmm. it seems like you have the same That's twenty four hours, right. but you feel like you have more time. Right. And the moments that you have with other people, even the noisy ones, seem to be more um, meaningful or actually a little bit more joyful. Right. So I think it, it starts to transform at even in the midst of those noisy people. Right. Mm. If you can even just take like three breaths while right. you're doing it, just like you did on the banks of the river, <laughs> then it, I think you know, again, it's that preconception that it's going to be peaceful right off the bat. Right. And that it's going to feel good. But I don't know that that's really true. And in a lot of meditation, it doesn't necessarily feel great in that moment. Right. But it's definitely, it, it's something that kind of seeps in. And suddenly you find, oh, when it used to bother me so much when the dog would bark and the kids are crying and my husband's nagging. It seemed to kind of roll off your back right. after a while, right? And then I also think ultimately it's about, like, getting into your body. So... Getting into your body can be as simple as like doing a stretch. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be this huge complicated thing that requires time and space. If you can do anything that makes you feel like, oh, I feel my body, then you've meditated essentially. (laughs) You've gone inside. Mini meditation. Is it a That's dream? meditation. <laughs> Mary, I hope you heard that. Just pinch yourself. Just pinch you're going to be fine. <laughs> pinch yourself and the babies will stop screaming. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think- so here's my question t- for you, kind of following up on what Mary said. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you keep going back? 
Because if you know that it takes practice, what I mean, motivates you? Doing yeah, it? what motivates you to keep going again and again? <sighs> well, it's like I said. In my case, I was superficial. And I <laughs> <laughs> She's a to be more flexible. So we should tell everybody it's going to make them look pretty, and they'll. they'll keep... <laughs> no, but my point <laughs> you know, is, is that true. it's whatever <laughs> motivates you. Whatever motivates you. Like, so whatever <laughs> it is that you really want, yeah. And then you discover, oh my God, meditation is helping me get better at it. Then just go into that thing that you really want. It could be like. It could be, I don't want to say dumb, but, well, well, you know, by like like other perspectives. Or... Yeah, it like, could be. Anyway, don't judge your motivation. Exactly. Just, what just motivates do it. You, yeah. Focus on that. If it mm. motivates you to. Exactly. And then mm-hmm. <laughs> there is no ridiculous reason. Just, just do it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I do know that um, some people have said that meditation slows down the aging process. Absolutely. And meditation helps people sleep more deeply. Uh, some people have been known to lose weight through meditation. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people say it improves their um, blood pressure, mm-hmm. their heart rate. Yeah, sleeping and better. also you know, your, you know, what's it called? What's it? We don't know. Posture. posture. Your posture. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking something new. We have to translate. <laughs> we need a Canadian translator on the show. Actually, you know what though? I actually, I have to admit, my mind was a little somewhere else. I thought she was gonna say something about like libido or something. <laughs> <laughs> because that's another thing that yeah, studies have shown. No, no, no. But that's yeah. another thing that studies it's have true. shown. You know that especially as people get older, that's one of the things that they're concerned about. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's really kinds of ways. right. And it's really about. Hey, all kinds it's really about your whole body's energy circulating and right. having a calm mind really is key for that. We got a, we have another question from the chat room. Calvin Marr said, my apartment is small and I live with my family. The house is always full, so I don't think I can find some quiet time just by myself. Do you have a suggestion? On walking! To meditate with other people. Walking! <laughs> get a, right? so just, Go out and just, walk! Just get out of the house. Just walk, he walk, walk, He's walk, not going to help you. <laughs> So he actually asked, the question was, do you have a suggestion on how to meditate with other people? That's a really mm. big issue, how to engage with other people Does that mean, you. Do, you, do you think he means, um, you know, meditating as a group? I or, you so. know, meditating right. while you're with other people, what does that mean? Because, oh. maybe two ways, let's answer it. One way can be, okay, I'm with other people, say right. I'm in a meeting or I'm in my house, or at the, you know, I just want to right. find a little quiet space inside of me I can't get away from necessarily. I can't get away from Yeah, like would space. I be embarrassed right. at the beginning of my business meeting to uh, meditate in front of the other people, <laughs> you know? Right. I, I might be, you know, might be mm-hmm. uncomfortable. But also, I think even how to engage other people is a really good, really good question. And I think it takes a little courage, too, especially if you're not mm-hmm. used to it yourself, if you're just getting into it. But... I think it when can you be presented. Hold on. When yeah. you say engage other people, you mean engage, engage. other people? Engage other people other to do it together. Yeah. Oh, you mean ask people okay. to join you. Yeah. So I'm. this is my first yeah, time meditating. Why don't you try it with me? It, it's actually, when you think, think about it... I think it probably is easier than we think I it's think it, it's yeah. sort of like, let's say you, you want to go on a certain diet. Like, you, I want to cut carbs. Right. It might be easier you if you to say to your best friend, your yeah, best friend or your, yeah. you know, can you go on this carb-free yeah. diet with me? You're, you're more likely right. to stick with it. Right. That's really great. But a meditation book? But... I was never that person. You mean you wouldn't ask your family or friends? No. no. She'd take a walk. She'd like, I'm just She would do the here. walk. I'm out of here. Right. Put your headphones on. I put my headphones on. I have another question. So, Calvin, I really hope we actually answer your question. I hope question. so. I hope and David so. Hammond, should I close my eyes when trying to do meditation? I want to open my eyes. Should I close them? I think... Why are you looking at me? No, no, no. But, but, but in reality, I think it's a, I can't, I don't know if I can answer that fully. I can only speak for myself. Yeah. Okay. I can say that, you know, when I started meditating, I closed my eyes because that was the easiest way for me to learn how to focus and concentrate. Well, actually, but yeah. over time, I learned how to, like I said, do, be meditative so that what action I'm yeah. taking, the meditative, and I could do that with my eyes open, whether that's, you know, drawing. You know, or there's walking. actually there have been studies that as soon as you close your eyes, your brain waves mm-hmm. lower, okay. not to an unconscious level like a mm-hmm. theta or delta, but actually you increase alpha waves. So wow. it actually is once you close your eyes, your brain starts producing a different kind of pattern, mm-hmm. and that alpha wave is actually what you're shooting for in meditation. That 
Right. That I'm sure some of you have heard of this. Beta waves are very short and fast. Right. So when we're alert mm -hmm. or when our mm -hmm. fight or flight um, right. response is activated, then we have a lot more beta waves. But when you close your eyes, almost immediately you, you can start get to. There. That's right. So I think as a beginner, right. it's important to try with your eyes closed. And then, uh, in my experience, I've done meditation with my eyes open, like mm -hmm. really the practice, not just meditative right. being, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it is helpful to focus on one point so you're not just, you're, when your right. eyes move around, your mind will move around uh -huh. too. So I hope that helps. Well, and uh, that's that... a really good point, Melissa, focusing on one point. Yeah. Yeah, and actually focusing downward. Right. Instead point. of like... Instead of like this, this, somehow like this, something's uncomfortable. Yeah. And I was going to say, there was uh, one uh, practice that I did, I think it was from I think it was Tibetan. But one of the things that they told they told people not to close their eyes mm -hmm. because when you go into a relaxed state, you're more likely to go to sleep. So ah, they actually told yeah, you yeah. to leave your eyes open half and either open. half yeah. open, focus on the tip of your nose, yeah, yeah, or too. focus on like a point like, you know, mm -hmm. on your lower abdomen and breathe. Right. And that by keeping your eyes open that half open, then you're likely to stay in an awakened <laughs> state. Oh, you mean sleeping is in a meditation? <laughs> I know. Oh, actually, I have like an eight hour meditation so every single time. day. There have been so many times I'm like, I'm going to sit down and meditate. And I'm like, and I'm like, flat <laughs> She's not even like and, in no, a deep sleep. No, but I she used to gone. justify like, oh, I'm meditating. You know, I'm just, I think that's a part of the process too. But it's not. It's not. Yeah, I think it's a part of the awareness. process. Yeah. You know what? I think I have to say for me, that has tended to, that happens more when I meditate with other people. I find that if I meditate, <laughs> no, really, if I meditate by myself, I haven't you like. I fall asleep. But <laughs> if I'm with a bunch of other people... But is it just like all the body heat in the room or something? Like, I don't know. So oh. I don't know. We go from, from... I guess we go from alpha waves together. We're like super... <laughs> uh, Delta. So we have one more question for tonight. Uh, from Sherry Ikawata. I really want to make... Ikawata. Ikawata. Hi, Ikawata. <laughs> Sherry Ikawata. I really want to make more hey, money. Hey, Sherry. I really want to make more money. Mm -hmm. How can I use meditation to help me achieve that? Well, Everyone got really honestly, quiet. We're like, honestly, meditation can get you whatever you want because it just helps you focus. And she's got so, a money back guarantee on that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want more money, it's not that you need to necessarily even meditate about money. Though you could possibly. But you can just become more focused. And so... If you oh, someone, become more focused and then you someone. intend to make more money, the money will come, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is actually, this will be a really good um, topic to go into the next time too, is that what are we going to use meditation for? Mm, right. Just doing meditation itself is a great start, right. but what are we going to use this for and, and what's the real intent and purpose right. behind meditation? So maybe yes. we can take that next time. And I think we can finish up for tonight. And it's been a real pleasure to be with all of you for our first ever episode of OMG, Our, our Meditation, Meditation Generation. Bye-bye.